Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, true it is, we know not what is on the morrow. And little did any of us know when we left these chambers last week that we would be brought back in the circumstances that we are thinking about today. However, it's not the first time, sadly, as an assembly that we have had reason to remember one of us who has passed away. Indeed, I was just thinking before I came into this chamber of those who have previously served in the role uh, as an MLA. They're no longer with us today. From parties right across this chamber. But I couldn't but not think about one of those dear friends who 15 years ago passed away, and I think of my dear friend, George Dawson. And it is a reminder to us all members that life is very short. For Christopher, it was only 39 years. For George, it was 47 years. For John Dallet, it was a lot longer, and for many others. However, the Scripture says that our life is as a vapor just appears for a very short period of time and then it vanishes away. This morning I had also the privilege of leading our party group. And I know other parties look upon the DUP with some degree of suspicion. Not sure exactly what it is that makes us up, why it is we do certain things. But we still, every morning when we meet in this house, in this building, we have the reading of Scripture and the offering of prayer. And this morning I was given the privilege of leading that devotion, and I, I quoted from a verse in Luke's Gospel concerning an old man who was passing away, an old man by the name of Simeon. He was handed the new Christ child, and in the temple in Jerusalem, this is what he said. Lord, now let thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. And how confident Simeon was that he held in his hand the one who was to him the joy of all Israel. And Simeon could with confidence say, I can now make my journey. I can now depart with peace from the scene of time. It is a joy to us all today to hear the comments that have been made about our colleague and our friend, Christopher Stolford. And all of that has been said is true about him, and much more. The bit that worries me the most is the comment in relation to the dry rivita. It was probably said about more of his colleagues than it was about anybody else, because <laughs> that's how he was. If you go up to the third floor, you'll find a room with Christopher's name on it. And it's like a museum. I just went in there and I took one of my colleagues in just to let them see some of the memorabilia that's in there. There are photographs of a very young Christopher Stolford being interviewed with his orange collar at the field in Finnecke by a camera crew. There's another one which is signed and he had great joy in it being signed by the late Lord Banside, Dr. Paisley, a very, very young Christopher Stolford. But there's a whole array of books on Churchill and on, yes, Margaret Thatcher and others. But it was a reflection of who he was. I always benefited from his ability to be able to write when he worked in party headquarters uh, press statements just proves the point that we're not all as capable as people think that we are. We always have to depend on someone else. And he had a sharpness about what he wanted to say or he wanted you to say on behalf of the party. But what will be the lasting legacy and memory of Christopher Stone? For his family, it will be a devoted father, son, brother, uncle, friend, but for us, it will be someone who you knew was always with you. And William, William and I would sit in the group meeting, and many a time 
uh, it would be it was comical to hear Christopher wanting to defend a particular issue and William would make a comment that would uh, probably challenge that. But it was done in a way that there was never hurt, there was never insult, because he had a compassion and a conviction in his heart. But you know, I believe, as I conclude, Mr. Speaker, the lasting legacy of Christopher Stalford is this. He had a personal faith that he didn't fear what the future brought. And you know, when we come into this chamber, the Speaker rightly asks us to stand for a moment or for a period of time in reflection. Today ought to be a reflection for us all because there is but a step between us and eternity. I want to say a word of thanks to those colleagues from different parties who contacted us over the weekend. It is genuinely appreciated. I also received a, a, a text from a colleague in the Doyle to say how much he was sad to hear the passing of Christopher Stolford. But colleagues, let today be an opportunity for us all to remember that one day it will be our memorial. One day it will be about us. Will we leave the same legacy? Will we leave the same epitaph that Christopher Stolford has left? I trust we will, by the grace of God. Thank you.